Hi, my name is Donette. I'm a physical therapist assistant here at San Joaquin Valley Rehabilitation Hospital. Our purpose here at San Joaquin is to help people to become stronger after they've had a stay at the acute care hospitals such as St. Agnes or Community. So we strengthen them, we improve their functional movement so that they will be safe when they go home. Of the many impairments that we see um, in our hospital, one of them are spinal cord injuries. That's what I'd like to focus on today. So a healthy spinal cord is vital to our function. This is a model of my spine here. So this would be where the brain would be. The brain is the computer of the body that sends and receives signals from all parts of the body. The spinal cord rests inside this bony thing we call the spine, and that's a bunch of ner nerves that go down the length of it, and they branch out all on the sides here at the vertebrae, and they send and receive the signals that go to the brain. When there's an, um, when there's an injury, a spinal cord injury, that interrupts those signals and it causes loss of function from that level on down. Now a spinal cord can be injured by a traumatic reason such as a car accident or a gunshot wound or a fall or a non-traumatic reason such as a tumor or cancer or um, an infection. So when our patients come to us with a spinal cord injury, we work with them to improve their strength and function. We also work with their caregivers to, to show them how they'll need to care for them when they go home. A big part of a spinal cord injury is skin care. So when three things can happen when you have a spinal cord injury. Loss of sensation, that means that below the level of the injury, there will be no feeling. So when you think about your skin, you can feel where things are too hot, things are too cold, there's too much pressure, and your skin lets you know, hey, you need to move and do something about that. So our spinal cord patient has lost this warning system. The second thing is loss of movement or paralysis. So below the level of the injury, that patient may or may not move again. So our, our muscles are cushioning for our bones. And when there's no movement in the muscles, they atrophy or they shrink. So it reduces the cushioning that that person has, um, thus leaving their skin more vulnerable to injury by pressure. The third thing is to decrease in blood circulation. So when your muscles don't move, they're not pumping that blood back to your heart. So the, there's not quite as much circulation and that means that there's not as much nutrition getting to your skin. So your skin becomes more fragile and more vulnerable to injury and it can take longer to heal if there is an injury. So pressure wounds are a big deal for a spinal cord injury patient and they really need to be on guard to um, alleviate this. So think of this, imagine yourself sitting in a movie theater watching a movie for say two hours you aren't going to sit perfectly still in that seat. You're gonna shift, you're gonna squirm, you're gonna move your legs because your body is saying, hey, enough pressure now, you need to move. Well, remember our spinal cord injury patient does not have that warning system. So we teach their caregivers or the, the patient themselves to relieve this pressure regularly when they're sitting in a wheelchair. So here's our patient sitting in the chair. So the caregiver is going to tilt that patient back every 20 to 30 minutes and relieve the pressure on their bottom to let the blood flow come back so that that skin keeps getting nourished and it doesn't just break down from the constant pressure of sitting. So the caregiver will tilt this person back, get comfortable of course, because you're gonna hold that person for three to five minutes to let that blood circulate again. So back to our spine. <clears throat> At the bottom of it, we have a pelvis. So. The bones right here we call our sits bones. These are the ischial tuberosities. That's when you sit on a chair, you're actually pressing those bones into the chair. That's the most vulnerable place for a spinal cord patient when they're sitting because those bones, if you don't relieve the pressure, will just cause wounds that can go all the way to the bone and it can happen very quickly. So we teach our patients that they need to be very vigilant about this. The same pressure um, idea applies to when they're in bed. So uh, again, when you're in bed, you don't stay in the same position all night. You move, you shift um, for the same reason, because pressure, say on your elbows, on your knees, on your back, all the bony parts of your body can receive this pressure and create a wound. So our patients here, we teach them to turn, we, we turn them every two hours and we'll teach their care, caregivers to do the same. Another thing we'll teach a caregiver and a spinal cord patient themselves is to check their skin every day. So if check for skin color changes, for bruises, for blisters, for cracked dry skin, that really needs to be monitored and addressed if any of those things happen and immediately because as I said, the skin is very vulnerable and very fragile and needs to be cared for. Otherwise, 
a pressure wound, um, you know, the wound cannot heal and create another problem for a person who does not need another problem. So we do work with our caregivers, we work with the patient, and we make sure that they are ready for their life at home and all the things that they are going to need, going to, need to do to get themselves back to better.